The already large Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer go supersize. I'm at the 2023 New York International Auto Show and these two gigantic SUVs are the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer L. Let's take a first look. Now, before we start talking about the dimensions of the L versions of both of these vehicles, I want to talk about the powertrain because this is the big news besides the size with these new 2023 models. First of all, the V8 engines have been replaced by a turbocharged, a twin turbocharged inline six cylinder engine. That's right. This is a newly developed engine that's codenamed Hurricane under the Stellantis engine family. And it has two specific outputs. The Wagoneer over there makes 420 horsepower and 468 pound feet of torque. Remember, this is a direct injection twin turbo in line six. The Grand Wagoneer has a high output version that requires premium gas. This makes 510 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. If you're looking at the score sheet, this model here has about 30 more horsepower versus the old 5.7 V8, while this model here has almost 40 more horsepower. So those are pretty healthy increases. In fact, this makes it the most powerful engine in the segment. Remember, this one here, the Grand Wagoneer competes with cars like the Cadillac Escalade, the long version, or the long version of the Lincoln Navigator, while that model over there is Jeep's competitor to the Chevrolet Suburban or the GMC Yukon Denali uh, XL. They all got, go out through an eight-speed automatic transmission. And the interesting thing here is uh, Jeep already has some fuel economy figures. The model over there can get 16 in the city and 22 on the highway. That's for a four-wheel drive model. If you guys go for an, a rear drive model, it increases it by one MPG. This model here, obviously, with the higher output, comes in at around 14 city, 19 highway. That's about of a one to two MPG improvement over the old V8. So it's still not wonderful numbers, but it is an improvement and it puts the Jeep now in line with all of its competitors. Now, towing capacity, you can still tow a maximum of around 10,000 pounds, and the L versions are roughly 200 pounds more. So that model over there is around 6,300 pounds. This one here is just over 6,700 pounds. But let me go ahead and shut the hood and show you guys the styling of this vehicle because it's practically the same. I mean, we first saw this car last year. It's Jeep's uh, return of the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. And the difference with the Grand Wagoneer is this is a luxury model. This is designed to compete with a Navigator and Escalade. While that one over there is the Wagoneer Carbide. It's kind of like a special edition of the Wagoneer where it includes lots of black accents, the black wheels, the black trim. It certainly looks good with all the black accents. I'd like to see it in white, but uh, it certainly has that boxier look. The Grand Wagoneer has been a huge success for Jeep in terms of bringing customers uh, who want a large uh, three-row style SUV with a body on frame. Now, looking at the side profile, this one here, the Grand Wagoneer is the Series 3. So it's the fully loaded model. Uh, and this one here, I don't have pricing just yet, but if you look at the rest of the profile, you can see just how much larger this is. Jeep says that they stretch the overall length by about 12 inches. So it's about a foot longer and its wheelbase is around seven inches longer. So you have a 130 inch long wheelbase. You have a 226 inch long overall length. So this vehicle is nearly 19 feet long. 19 feet, this is not gonna fit in most standard size garages, but it's basically gonna give you all the space in the cargo area. The second and third row legroom space is pretty much still top in the class, but Jeep gave us basically 15% more space in terms of the legroom. You can see over here, you can really see the stretched out proportions here of that third window with all of the chrome trim. The carbide's gonna black out the trim. You still have that two-tone roof design with a panel style roof, which also includes a glass portion over the third row. It really gives it one of the most luxurious and open and airiest cabins that you're gonna find uh, in the segment. Now coming over to the rear of the vehicle, you can see the Grand Wagoneer and the Wagoneer has slightly different designs to the taillight designs. The Wagoneer over there uh, has a little bit more red versus the Grand Wagoneer gives you like an amber uh, white color in the actual turn signal. They're a full LED design. You can see the difference here. It says Grand Wagoneer versus Wagoneer. I still think the Jeep should have just called the longer version, the Grand Wagoneer, the shorter version, the Wagoneer, but instead they just wanted to confuse us all. Now coming over to the cargo area, uh, this vehicle does have significantly more space. In fact, with the third row seat up, I want you guys to look at this space. There's 44 in cubic feet of space back here. 44 cubic feet is more versus what you're gonna find with the second row seats up in most compact SUVs. So this has roughly 15 more cubic feet of space with the seats up. That's a crap ton amount of space. If you fold down the third row seat, which by the way, it's power actuated, this expands it out to just under 90 cubic feet. So you could basically still have um, two people in the back or in the second row seat over there, and then you have almost 90 cubic feet of space. If you fold down everything, Jeep says you can get a maximum of 130 cubic feet in the Wagoneer. The Grand Wagoneer, because of that console, drops it down to around 122 cubic feet of space. Still, that space is gonna rival most minivans, and it makes the Grand Wagoneer L and the Wagoneer L one of the most spacious and most practical vehicles in this segment. 
So welcome to the interior of the 2023 Grand Wagoneer L, the Series 3 model. You can see just like the standard length version, this interior is really, really nice, full of some of the world-class materials that are gonna allow it to compete with Cadillac, with Lincoln, with the best of even Mercedes and BMW. This Series 3 model you can see has this really interesting kind of grayish blue leather with the contrast orange stitching. You still have an available real estate of up to 75 screens in this car. You can see there's a 12 inch display here, a 12 inch display here, a 10 inch display here, a 10 inch display here. And then you also have the digital camera review mirror, a big heads up display. The dash is completely leather lined. You have real metal trim. You also have beautiful ambient lighting in this car, uh, which is something that Jeep has never really done. But remember, this is supposed to be a flagship luxury SUV. The seats also are covered in Palermo leather. They're heated, they're ventilated, they're massaging. Uh, they even have like a kind of like a headrest here that adjusts to be almost like a pillow. So if you guys are used to spending some time in Mercedes, BMW, this Jeep is gonna seriously uh, surprise you. But overall, the cabin's practically the same. I wanna show you guys the second row space because this Grand Wagoneer includes these captain's chairs. So you can seat up to six people. The Wagoneer over there can also come with a bench seat where you can seat up to eight people. And you can see the legroom here, there's about 40, a little over 40 inches of legroom back here. Uh, so this is a ton of space. In fact, the legroom is the same as the non-L. So if you're thinking this has more second row space, uh, this has the same. You have a screen over here, you have two 10 inch monitors over here, and that's where Jeep kind of comes with that number of nearly 75 inches of total screen. There's also Fire TV, so you have streaming services in this vehicle, and it also has its own rolling hotspot. So you, it allows you basically to have a first class lounge seat here. There's even these manual sunshades over here. And the seats back here, they're pretty much just as comfortable as the front. The only thing they don't offer is the massaging feature. That's something that Lincoln just introduced in the new Navigator where you have massaging second row seats. But I have to say, this does feel more spacious and just as nice as the last Navigator that I was in, the refresh model. So this is still a great, great place to spend time. Now, let me show you guys the third row for this vehicle because it does have a little button here where you can push that top button, it moves the seat forward. And then once I get back here, I'm gonna come here and shut the door. You can see because of that independent rear suspension, uh, and also I love the fact that it has a, a sunroof over here where you can let in some light, you get around 36.6 inches of legroom back here. So it's unchanged from the non-L, but you do have features like a power recline function for the third row. You have USB charging ports back here. There's no heated third row seats. That's something that I've seen in some competitors, but if you actually need to carry basically up to eight people and also have a ton of room for everyone's stuff, you're gonna wanna go for the L. It's one of the reasons why Jeep decided to build this car. So as you can see, the L version of the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer is something that Jeep needed because even though the regular versions were already big cars, People in America just love having more. They wanted basically the same interior space, but they also wanted that extra cargo room that the additional foot worth of overall length gives you. As you guys saw, the cargo space is just gigantic. Jeep claims it's the largest in the segment. And when you have cars like the Suburban and the Cadillac, uh, a long wheelbase version, the Navigator uh, e, uh, Navigator L version of this car. It really is something that Jeep needed. Now, while I don't have final pricing just yet of the L versions, remember this car, the standard length model starts at just under 60 grand. The Grand Wagoneer for the regular version is around $88,000. I suspect this is gonna be more expensive. I really like what Jeep has done with the carbide model with the black 22 inch wheels all the black trim, but let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the overall look. I think it looks a little bit strange from certain angles, stretched so much, but I am really excited to get behind the wheel of this car because I wanna try out that new Hurricane Twin Turbo Straight Six. Everybody is a little bit sad about the death of the, v of the V8, but the fact that Jeep has decided to develop a new straight six cylinder that has twin turbos gets me really excited because again, I've said it before and before, we are at the pinnacle in terms of internal combustion engines with the industry moving toward electrification. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video for Redline Reviews here at the 2022 New York International Auto Show. I'm Sophie Ambe.